Welcome to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Justin Kadonier. On the show this morning, the International Monetary Fund advises the Nigerian government to completely remove fuel and electricity subsidies in early 2022. Now, the Washington-based organization noted that the removal of retrogressive fuel and electricity subsidies should be considered a priority as part of the government fiscal policy. Also, the Nigerian Railway Corporation workers have actually called off the uh, warning strike and they are back to work. It was a night of glamour and glitz at the African Music Award yesterday with lots of artists going away with wonderful awards last night. Glad to have you join us. I am Justin. Akadone. And I am Messi Vopo. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Thanks for joining us as usual. Yes, uh, Messi, uh, it was a very wonderful weekend. How was your weekend? Very well, and uh, it's good to have you here this Thank morning. Thank you so much. Glad to present with you today. All right, so as usual, we'll start off with our top trending. And of course, Ole Gunnar uh, Solskjaer is actually out. It's, it's been called by a lot of persons. Now, this actually happened shortly after the defeat to uh, Watford 4 1. And uh, Quite sad for Manchester United, really. Uh, it hasn't been, you know, a great season for, for them. And the fact that uh, only a lot of persons feel like this call has been long overdue. He should have been out prior to this time. And maybe at this point in time, you probably would have had, uh, you know, Conte, Antonio Conte on the seat. Well, however, it is what it is better late uh, than none. Mm -hmm. And uh, it feels like it's a great time for a lot of Manchester United fans. Uh, a lot of persons are quite excited globally because it feels like this call has been long, long overdue. Indeed, it has been long overdue because uh, a lot, lot of um, Manchester United fans have actually you know, been wondering just what next uh, is in uh, for the club. You know, Just after Saturday's 4-1 defeat to Watford, it was the, the, the fifth uh, loss they have had as, um, you know, as, a, as a team. And um, mostly, most people had even wanted uh, for the coach to have been sacked even before that last match. Mm, yes, and that's why I said prior to this time, mm. it's long overdue because even Anthony Conter, uh, that's currently not with Manchester United at the time, you know, had waited long, long, long and was hoping that, you know, uh, Manchester United would actually call him forth. Mm. But you see, the trust in Ole Gunnar was really, really strong and up until this moment. Well, however, let's see what pans out. The truth is, all, of, all through the game, I mean, he's had uh, 168 games. Mm -hmm. uh, he won 92 of them and he drew, during his administration, he drew 35 and uh, he had... 41 defeats. But the most thing, mm. you know, annoying thing is the fact that, that some fans have actually tagged is that, you know, there are no trophies. No okay. trophies. No trophies at all. Uh, when you compare that to, I mean, when you had Jose Mourinho, uh, he won like three trophies and no trophies. Some people, I mean, a lot of fans and those who love football has described, uh, have actually described his stay mm. in Manchester United as a waste of resources. Well, the, 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 the man has actually, uh, you know, accepted his fate just like that and he has decided to just step aside. And uh, he said something, let me just quote him. Uh, he told uh, United and um, clubs and um, West that you know what this club means to me and that what I wanted to achieve. For the club, for the fans, for the players, for the staff, I wanted us to take the next step to challenge for the league, to win trophies. And I only think it's right that it comes from the horse's mouth. I don't want to answer or there's going to be journalists asking me about interviews, but no, I'm not going to do any interviews. I want to get it out there. I'm going to leave by the front door because I think everyone knows I've given everything for this club. However, um, you know, you cannot actually discard the fact that he's done a lot of, you know, he's done a great job. Mm. Uh, as much as you would say, uh, there were a lot of expectations that he didn't make. But, know, but, but, actually, for, but for fans, when, when you talk about great job, they just want to see lots of goals, they want to see trophies. And they, if uh, you don't bring that to the table, you haven't done well. That's what uh, an average um, uh, No, but, but some, people, so, some persons would also talk about the recruitment process. Uh, prior to this time, okay. it, was, it wasn't, uh, you know, that smooth and it wasn't that easy. So mm -hmm. a, a lot has actually, uh, we, we should also give him a little bit of credit. As much as his mm -hmm. performance hasn't been great, uh, he, he's done quite a lot. And yes, uh, even the club himself would say, yeah, they look forward to even having him back mm -hmm. in the nearest future. Well, we wish him all the best, though. 
All right, let's move away from uh, that particular conversation and head straight to another one that generated mm. a lot of conversation in different space. Uh, we're talking about the Lagos State Government crushing 482 impounded motorcycles. And these impounded motorcycles were actually, uh, you know, they applied restricted areas. Mm. Uh, that has also generated a lot of conversation. It has, Mercy. You know, the thing is that uh, when the, the Lagos um, traffic law was passed sometime, uh, was it 2011, 2012, uh, they, the, the Lagos state government came out to, you know, list some specific routes that uh, motorbikes uh, cannot fly. But over time, you know, you know how recalcitrant uh, these um, bikers could be sometimes. So, but they just feel that um, if they don't fly this route, which are major routes, that they don't even know where they'll be getting their daily, uh, you know, <laughs> daily upkeep from so it's 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 really something the, the, that amount is much 482 you said yes 482 now the commissioner for police was uh, quoted mm. to say that this is not the first time it's happening okay. but this is just to go ahead to correct an impression of naysayers who probably think that uh, this motorbikes or motorcycles are not being uh, crushed okay. rather they have been recycled or probably been sold so mm. uh, it was done so that the public can see it publicly uh, and that's why that act was being carried out but you also need to begin to see some of the comments that he generated i am also uh, of the school of thought that i mean rather than crush it why don't you ask them to pay fines because but, that's also a source of i mean if you say that mm. they're operating around restricted restricted access or yes. roads that have been restricted mm -hmm. it therefore means that they are roads that they can actually ply and yes. so if they're roads that they can actually ply why crush them what, rather than give them you know um, some punishment or penalty they pay some fines and then they can I, the I, get, because, I get all of that well, message. You know, that's, that's a source of livelihood. To, I'm that's not trying to play devil's advocate here, but the truth is that over time, there have been series of warnings. And this, the, the, the law has been there for like forever. You know, It is really alarming sometimes, Mercy, when you go... Um, across uh, along the route and you find them um, this bike as you know in top speed across a uh, brt lanes and that uh, it is boldly stated there for brt only but these dead devil bikers you know they just do you know their damnedest as it were you know and uh, you know take such routes if you return their bikes mercy tomorrow believe me they'll still take the same i'm route. not just saying for free that's why i'm saying that because i mean if you look at it 482 about that uh I mean, of what benefit? Mm. Well, well, that's a waste entirely. And that's been crushed. And let's not forget. And um, my point is, if we have restricted areas, it means we don't. We also have areas that are not restricted. We also have areas True. that they can ply. True. And so True. if we have areas that they can ply, why don't we rather encourage them to ply those areas and, and give them some punishment? They could pay fines well, and retrieve yeah, the bike. Have, yeah, because sort of at the end of the day, some, some people are saying yeah. that, you know, the, the, the rate of unemployment, crime and criminality might probably just increase because at the end of the day, I mean, the bike's gone. There's probably nothing that they can do. I, I think, don't know, I, I but think, I think that this is quite wasteful. I think, think in my head, over time, done. the, the, the Lagos State Government just wants to, you know, do away with uh, that mode of transport that's why uh, they've been for restricted areas <laughs> <laughs> not entirely well, that's that, my point point. another thing again is it really safe because there are recommended bikes that could be used to even ply roads you know but most of them are not even the recommended ones uh, that are used you know you know because it's it is stated there in the Lagos um, traffic law of um, 20 you know 2012 you know but uh, I can't remember the, the CC, the capacity for bikes, you know, to ply those roads, but most times you just see all sort of bikes, you know, and mercy, most people have actually been killed, most people have been maimed because of some careless uh, bike riders. I, I, I'm very used to this because this particular, I mean, this particular action is mm. not just limited to Lagos State, it no, cuts across, you know, some okay. parts of Nigeria, so you have some states also who also have the same law and saying you can have these uh, motorcycles ply some certain um, roads across the state. But, but you see, if you say there are roads that they can actually ply, it therefore means that there are roads that cannot ply. True. My, my point Maybe is crushing lands. the bikes is entirely you know, not a great idea. And that's my opinion. Right. I'm thinking that you know, it is such a wasteful time. I mean, it's such a wasteful act, if you ask me. And right. a particular time where you know, the Nigerian economy is where it is, and the fact that a lot of people are going through you know, some kind of stress trying to keep body and soul together. But however, yeah. uh, well, that's the much we can take at this point in time. We'll definitely step on the brakes. When we come through, we head straight to checking out the front pages of our national dailies. And of course, we will have a guest join us to make sense of all of this. Please stick around. Good morning.